Yes, can I hear can hear you. Yes, I can. So thank you for unmuting me and say something. Yeah. Uh, yes. Himali, I have a question. That's uh, uh, just uh, sorry. I will just address the room. Um, sorry, I had to put you back. Oh yeah. So um, once Alan and Mariana are done with their presentation, because there are a lot of students who are new and they wouldn't know what's um, you know what our courses are and they need a small brief. Once that's done, you all will be getting proper 15 to 20 minutes uh, Q&A round in the end. So please be patient. I know you have a lot of questions, uh, but I would love that, you know, Alan and Mariana address you more than me. So just try, uh, you know, wait for like 30 minutes. Once the whole th presentation is done, they will uh, give you a one on one session. I think we can begin. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is, uh, is Alin, and together with my colleagues Mariana and Ruth, uh, we will be giving you this presentation, which basically will cater Malta in general, Malta as a destination, the working opportunities in Malta. Then Mariana will take over when it comes to the admissions, giving you information about the admissions uh, for GBS Malta, and my colleague Ruth, who is the administration manager for GBS Malta, will cater the section when it comes to visa. I know you probably have a lot of questions for visa, the system for Visa and Malta has changed, so there is a new process now. Uh, hopefully it's a faster process as well, and Ruth will be giving us this information uh, later on throughout the, pre the presentation. The idea of this presentation is to first start uh, by giving you a video about the Malta campus, and then we go through each and every slide together. As my colleague Hamali said, after the presentation session, there is a question and answer session, which I would like to keep it maximum 15 minutes. Then, of course, if you have more questions to ask, please feel free uh, to send us an email or give us your email address in the chat, and then we can get back in touch with you via, via email if you want. Uh, so let's start the presentation. And as we said, after the presentations, any questions you have, please uh, let us know. Are you able to share? Sorry. Yes, I'm able to share, but I cannot. I cannot share the sound. Me an error. So I think. Uh, anyway, the the audio is not that important because there's only one slide with with the audio. So let's start the presentation and then we'll go through it. So this was a brief video of our campus. Uh, we are located in St. Julian's, which is a prime location in Malta, very close to practically everything. So we have a nice sandy beach, five minutes walk from our school. Our area is surrounded by a lot of hospitality industry, for example, like hotels, gaming, gaming sectors, sector as well next to the bus stop as well we and that is a very important uh, stop for, for our students because they literally stop next to our campus and then they come to school so all in all it is a prime a, a prime location you could see a bit of snapshots from malta what malta has to offer but in the next slide we will of course give you more information about this uh, so we start the presentation 
by presenting ourselves as GBS Malta, which is the higher education entity uh, of, of Malta. Uh, and it's our tagline is changing lives to, through education. What you see here is practically Valletta, which is the capital city of Malta. And further, further away from Valletta, there is Slima, which is mainly a shopping destination. Plus, of course, uh, a nice destination for anyone that would like to walk through the promenade and even stop and have like lunch and dinner. So uh, this is the next presentation. Now, one of you might say, but why, why Malta? Uh, Malta, at the moment, the unemployment rate is actually at 2.7%. So over here, 2.9% uh, has been needs to be adjusted. And this means that working opportunities in Malta are vast. Uh, I would say that apart from GBS, which is the higher education school, the group also have English part, which is the English language school. And at the moment, out of 300 students that we currently have in our campus, 90% of these students are all working in Malta. Uh, working opportunities are vast. Students can work a total of 20 hours per week during the academic calendar. And there's a lot of sectors where students can work. Hospitality industry is one of them, uh, ranging from, for example, a marketing manager, duty manager, front office manager. Uh, then there is the gaming sector. We have a lot of companies here like Betsin, Bwin, B365 that are in Malta. They open an, uh, an office here. They employ 400, 500 people and they pay quite good salaries. And there's also the financial sector. It is the first EU state that regulated the online gaming and the blockchain industries. An incredible value English speaking destination. In fact, our second language is, is, is English. Some of some of us even say that English is our main language because uh, we speak, we start talking in English and speaking in English from the from the early age. Uh, the international airport in itself is connected to all almost all major European cities. Now, this is very important because keep in mind that the visa that students will have in Malta is a Schengen visa. It's a very strong visa that gives access to a total of 26 countries. And interestingly enough, we have students that over the weekend, they just take a flight, 20 minutes flight, and they are in Sicily. And then on Sunday evening, they come back so that Monday they can continue their classes. So the fact that students don't need to apply for another visa to travel around these 26 countries, uh, this is a very, in my opinion, a very important aspect for, for any student that would like to have a short break while studying. Uh, it has a lot of history and cultural heritage. Uh, just mentioning, for example, that our temples are even older than the pyramids. Uh, so that, that gives you an indication of the long history that Malta has. Uh, it performs above the European average when it comes to infrastructure, business and creative outputs. It is a sun spoiled country. I say we have sun 300 days out of 365 days. Uh, in fact, we are already wearing uh, summer clothes, even though we are in May. Uh, it is the fastest growing economy in Europe. This is not coming from me because I'm Maltese, but these are according to the NSO statistics. Upon graduation, you are given a nine month PSW. It's a post study work visa where students can stay in Malta either to find a job, either to open their own business or else to stay here and decide exactly what they want to do. Of course, if after nine months a student hasn't yet find a job or is not interested in opening his own business in Malta, then unfortunately he has to leave and go back, go back home. One thing to mention here is that uh, there are entities in Malta that even help students uh, open their own business. What, what do I mean by this is that one of them is the gay, is the business first in Malta, and this entity helps students by giving them examples of how to create a business plan by making appointments with banks in order to, to get bank loans and by giving them some indications of which which sector might work well in Malta. And this is all thanks to, of course, the uh, European funds. And that's why we have these these entities. It's a Schengen visa, as I was saying. So keep in mind that with, with, the, with the Malta visa, you are allowed to travel within the 26 countries. And we have the Get Qualified Scheme, which we will be mentioning later on. The Get Qualified Scheme is basically a one-off scheme in Malta, where upon graduating, you will get up to 70% back of what you paid in tax credit. There are some terms and conditions that apply. One of them is that two years minimum, you need to, to, to stay in Malta and work in Malta. So the funds, you will get back the funds once you start working in Malta and paying your, your taxes. The next slide is 
general information about Malta. Uh, it's the population is almost 100% now fully vaccinated against COVID. As I said, we have two official languages, Maltese and English. It's a relatively easy, easy visa process. And I must say that with the new visa process, which uh, should be in place within the next few days, the visa process will be even easier than it used to be. It is among the safest country in the EU to travel. Uh, this is reflected even when we have students here or, or agents that come to visit Malta. They always tell me how safe they feel, even when they are walking, for example, at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, free public transport. This is something good for all of you. Uh, Malta is the second country in Europe that has implemented a free public transport to anyone that is in Malta for oh, more than 90 days. So practically anyone that comes here for more than 90 days, public transport is free of charge Monday to Sunday, 24 hours. It has a Mediterranean climate, as I was saying. So we have like winter is normally November to February. After February, you start experiencing a bit of heat. The worst two months are, of course, July and August, where temperatures can be a bit hot, like 35, 40 degrees Celsius. And the last point, which is very important, is that students can work a total of 20 hours per week whilst studying in Malta. The next slide is a brief description of a general cost of living in Malta. Of course, some, some things might vary, but just to give you an idea, I think from this slide, the most important things are accommodation. Accommodation, we as a school have accommodation options. I will be showing you this in the next few slides. But if you decide to rent a room, for example, uh, you will have your own bedroom, but then you will still need to share the kitchen and bathroom. In specific areas, you might be looking at 500 euros per month. Some areas even go up to 600 euros per month. Mobile subscription. Keep in mind that anyone that is coming from uh, outside Europe, they need to have a local SIM card. We as a school provide local SIM cards to students free of charge. But of course, then you need to top up uh, some credit on these SIM cards. But you are normally looking at 25 euros per month if you want to have a, a mobile subscription, which gives you access to unlimited data, for example, unlimited calls and unlimited SMS. The average cost of living in Malta is currently at 1,200 euros, 1,300 euros per month. The minimum wage is 182.83 per week. Now, when you see this figure, you might say, wow, that's 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 little. And you're right because nobody pays these fees. I mentioned the gaming industry earlier on uh, in this slide and a normal starting job with the gaming industry. We are looking at something around 1,500 euros per month. Uh, so this is why the average salary in Malta is 1,500. However, there are other jobs. I know people that work in the gaming industry, for example, and they have a higher managerial position. They can get even up to 60,000 euros per month. Uh, and that is quite a good salary for Malta. Eating out. If you decide, let's say Saturday, Sunday, you want to go out and eat in a good restaurant, you are looking at 20 euros, 25 euros per person. And the fuel price, it is the cheap in Europe because of hedging agreement the government has made a few years ago and currently the fuel price is one euro 34 cents uh, per, per liter. So this is just an indication for all of you to have an idea of how, how much money you will need to be able to live comfortable uh, in Malta. The next slide is about us. We are a global banking school. We currently have campuses in London, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds. We've opened Dubai. And recently we've opened Malta. Uh, and we have, of course, a legacy of over 10 years. Uh, our objective is, of course, to help students strive in today's competitive, competitive job by offering the excellent links with employers and focus on personalized academic and career guidance. I will mention this uh, um, employers and career guidance later on because uh, we have some information over there as well. As you can see here, you have the BATS by University because uh, we are approved and in partnership with Baspa University. So our degree is a UK recognized international degree and is also in line with our Malta qualifications framework. Our school is also licensed by the Malta Fire Further Higher Education Authority. And only once you get that the, the approval, you can start operating as a higher education school in Malta. This is about GBS Malta, as we said, located in St. Julian's. And you have literally everything at hand, restaurants, bars, pubs, working opportunities, bus stop, a nice small beach five minutes away from the school. So the area is in itself 
changing all the time, to be honest, from what it used to be back in the days. Pacheville was mainly known from clubs and pubs. Now it's changing more in you know, of business premises and business areas, sort of. So the areas continuously developing. Uh, our lecturers are experienced. We have lecturers, both local lecturers and also lecturers from UK coming here uh, for four or five weeks and then they go back to UK. Uh, so we have the career advice where we will be giving tips to our students what jobs they can find whilst whilst in Malta and while studying with us. We do not want our students to end up doing, doing low level jobs like waiters, for example, but we want to help our students. If you're studying in business and management, we want to find something for you that is related to, to, to the field of studying. And of course, we want to grow, growing your own business and helping you build your network. We will also be getting here speakers from various industries like CEOs of companies, big companies in Malta to give you presentations and, and talks of how you can be better and find the, the best working opportunity for you. So as you, as you can see here, we have the Get Qualified Schemes, small classes, free career de development, personal attention and, and so on. What you see here is that this church is located in in Slima, Balluta, Balluta, and this is Balluta Bay. All beaches in Malta are practically public beaches, so you can use these beaches free of charge without the need to pay any extra any extra fees. These are the current four courses that we have, starting from the BA program, which is a three-year degree. Then we have the MBA in leadership, which is a one-year program, and two masters, one in marketing and brand management and one business and management. All of them a one-year program, and that, as you can see, there is the Get Qualified logo. Uh, that means that all four courses are recognized and approved by the Get Qualified, which practically means that after graduating and you started working in Malta, you can get up to 70% S tax credit. Keep in mind, that 70% is quite a, a, a big amount. So practically, if you're paying 7,000 euros for a master's, you may end up paying just 3,000 because 70% you will get them back uh, through government funds and through tax credit. Now, these are the courses offered. Uh, Mariana here, probably the next slide will, will give you more information. Where we basically, as I said, we have a BA program, three years, and it's at 6,000 euros per year. We also have the masters, which are at 7,000 euros per year, and the MBA, 8,000 euros per year. Interestingly to say uh, that we, we, we have decided that for the next intake, if you pay 50% as initial payment, then you can pay the other 50% before this, the start of the second semester. So we have like a payment plan where instead of paying the full amount, you can pay 50% now, and then before the second semester, you pay the remaining amount. Now, I think this, this is, these are our intakes, uh, February, April and October. The April intake has been moved to June for this time for the simple reason that the central visa unit, as I said, we're doing changes when it comes to visa. So this year, the intakes are June and October, but as from the year after, the intakes will be February and April and October. And the awarding institution, as I said, is Batspa University. Now, this is where my colleague Mariana will join because this is now about, about the admission. So, Mariana, all yours. Thank you, Alan. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Mariana. So, I'm the senior admissions officer. So, all applications, it's just me and my colleagues that we process. So, as Alan mentioned, we work with BSU, but Spy University is a UK university. So, once you finish the course, you're going to have a UK degree so for so basically for any undergraduate program you have to have a qualification that is equivalent to a level three in the uk it, it, it varies from depending on the country you are from but basically it needs to be to be equivalent to a level three and for all the masters or the mba you need to be uh, you need to hold a bachelor's degree so obviously the criteria, it depends, is a bit different depending on the course you are applying for, but all this information is on our website. If you are interested, you can always go there and check what are the entry requirements. But basically would to apply for those courses, you have to have a passport. And I think um, Ruth might say a little bit more later on, but your, your passport needs to be valid for the period of your visa plus an additional amount of time. Um, as I said, you have to have a qualification and it depends 
uh, it depends on what course you are applying for. And also you need to prove your English proficiency. So we do accept different uh, tests. Uh, we, we accept the IELTS, we accept uh, Duolingo, we, ac we accept a different um, English tests. Uh, I particularly always recommend Duolingo just because it's very affordable and usually you, you can take the test within a week and then you get your results within two or three, or three days after you did the test. Uh, obviously, we do have some, um, for example, if you are an applicant from Ghana or Nigeria, you can use your y YX certificate and then, or for example, if you have a medium of instruction proving that your degree was taught in English, we can accept those documents. But in general, you will have to prove your English proficiency by uh, taking an English test. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, so those are the language requirements. So if it, as I said, we can accept it, we can accept any of those. You just need to make sure that you always, um, you, you know, you are, sorry, I just missed the word. So just need to make sure that you have the minimum requirements. So for example, IELTS, the overall is six. However, you cannot have a score five in listening, for example, because the minimum is 5.5. So that's the only important thing to, to stress here. You have to make sure that you, you you hit the minimum requirement in every single component. Yeah, and then so once we receive your application, obviously we're going to have someone from our recruitment team contacting you just to learn a little bit more of what you're expecting, why you're applying for the course, and then they're going to tell you more information about the documents that we need. Uh, once we process your application, depending on the documents that we already have, we might be able to issue you a conditional offer. So usually we can issue a conditional offer if the pending documents are English test or, for example, your final certificate. Because sometimes we have provisional uh, certificates, which is enough to prove that you finished your qualification, but we can't accept always provisional certificates. So we will need a final certificate, but it is enough for us to issue you a conditional offer, for example. So um, once we have your conditional offer, you have to meet the conditions, of course. So if he, is your transcripts missing or is the English test, once we, his, we receive those documents, we will be able to issue you an unconditional offer. Um, once you have that unconditional offer, then that's when we start the visa process. So as Alan said here, so for the next intake, now we can accept just the first payment of 50% of the fees. And then once we receive the payment, that's when we start the visa process. We have to, um, we have a list of documents that we need to receive from you. And once we have all those documents and we have the payment, we, we, we will issue you a visa letter. And um, well, Ruth is going to give more information about the visa process. But yeah, basically from the admissions side, so yeah, once we receive your application and then we process the, all the documents, we will issue you a conditional or if we already have all the documents and unconditional offer. Um, Alan, I just want to confirm with you. So is it a Ruth start from here? Or would you like me to tell a little bit more about the process? I think Ruth, Ruth can take over because Ruth is, is, is here. Sure. So then the next slide is about visa. So my colleague Ruth, uh, who is basically our spokesperson as well with the Central Visa Unit in Malta, can give you more information about the visa process. Ruth. Hello everyone. Hi, I'm I'm Ruth. Um, I'm Maltese, living in Malta, working in Malta. Um, and I'm the admin manager for GBS. Basically, my my work with you at the moment would be with the visa process. So basically, um, all all the visa national people will need to apply for a Schengen visa for a 90 day visa. 
um, and then there are other countries obviously who do not need any any visa for to come to Malta then apply for the D visa once in Malta and that is for one year Here you can find the list of documents we will be requesting from you uh, basically to apply for the visa. You will need a letter which we will give you uh, once you, you, your payment has been passed um, and all the other documents we will check for you and to see that all, uh, all the required necessary information is, is included. Now, as my colleague Ellen was saying previously, um, the process has changed from before. So at the moment we are looking at three different types of visas and this depends on uh, on your nationality or where you live. There, there is the national the Schengen visa, which is for 90 days. There is the premium visa and there is this the new system. Basically for now, the new system only applies for India, Bangladesh and Nepal. Um, other uh, countries which do not have um, a Maltese mission in their country will apply using the premium visa. All the other countries will apply with the normal student Schengen visa. This sheet over here, I can uh, attach it to this chat later on so you can all see it clearly. Um, this one indicates all the required documents you will, you will need to submit your visa application. It is very important that with your visa application you have um, the travel and health insurance. This one needs to cover 30,000 euros. Um, and for any other other documents, it's always advisable to check with your local embassy uh, or mission if, if you don't have an embassy in, in your country, because sometimes they would require different uh, documents attached to your visa, which is not not relevant for everyone. And for more information, you can also check with the Identity Malta Central Visa Unit. This is our insurance. We recommend this insurance for, for our students. However, you can use other insurance agencies, but need to be obviously um, which issue policies for the Schengen area. Thank you, Ruth. A, a brief information about accommodation. We have basically three options. We have our residence, which is located 20 minutes from our school. Uh, it's only one bus, in fact, and keep in mind, as I said earlier, that buses are free of charge, so we'll, you will not be paying anything extra for making use of the bus. It's, in my opinion, an American style residence. We have single and twin rooms available for our students. Both options come with an ensuite bathroom, so you will have your own bathroom in, in, in your room. There's a cluster kitchen, so over here, uh, the second picture, this one is the cluster kitchen. There's also an outdoor pool which is only available for students living at Campus Hub. There's a study area, lounge area, and the last picture is, of course, uh, the, the bathroom, which I said, uh, each room has an ensuite bathroom, AC in summer, and also heating in winter, and water and electricity, of course, are included in our, in our prices. Uh, then we have the shared apartments. We have a total of eight apartments, so give it, they give us approximately a total of 33 beds all located 15 to 20 minutes by bus from our school. And of course, over here you have uh, the option of having your own kitchen in the apartment. Uh, we have apartments that can take up to two students. And, uh, we have other apartments. The majority of them can take up to four students. But then we have a big penthouse, which is over here, where you can see the terrace that can take even up to nine students, because each room is practically a triple. The good thing about the penthouse is that each bedroom has an ensuite bathroom. Of course, accommodation is always subject to availability and unfortunately the penthouse because it has the terrace and, and the, the ensuite bathrooms are, most of the time is the first that is taken. But this is also an option for our GBS Monta students. And then we also have host family options. Uh, host families can vary from 
a five minute distance from school up to again 20 minutes from school. The good thing about host families is they, that they are English speaking host families, so they will speak to the students in English, uh, licensed of course, because in Malta to host any student you need to be licensed, and you will experience the culture and the traditions and the food of, of the local people themselves. So this is also an option for those of you that are interested in staying with, with a host family. Again, over here you will have the option of twin rooms or single rooms, depending on the availability. These are some pictures of our campus. Uh, that is, of course, the facade of our campus. We have also a computer lab. Uh, at the moment, we have 12 physical computers that can be used by our students, but of course, the campus is equipped with Wi-Fi in each room, so you can bring your own laptops or tablets or phones, and Wi-Fi is free of charge. We have a library with books about management, for example, finance, accounting. Uh, so we have a, a physical library at the school. This is the lounge area where students can have lunch, for example, can have coffee, and there is an information channel going on uh, about GBS, for example, and about Malta. And as you can see, this is one of our students actually having a coffee, five minutes walk from our campus, and behind her you can see uh, the sea. Uh, as I said, five minutes away from our campus, there is a nice small sandy beach. These are our pages. We have the GBS Malta Instagram page and Facebook and, and LinkedIn, of course. So please feel free to follow us on these platforms because we always put updates over there. I must say almost every day. So please do follow us for more information. And I think the next slide is basically the question and answer. So first of all, I would like to thank my colleagues for, for this wonderful presentation and for all of you. Uh, that listen to us carefully. We are ready for your questions, so please feel free. We have 15 minutes time. Uh, any questions you might have, please let, let's let let's hear your questions. Yeah, we have the first one from Amita Soni. Uh, my 6M results of graduation may delay. Would I get admission for September intake? I think I can answer that one. So um, if you just graduated, and you have a provisional certificate that because you just finished the course, then in that case, yes, we can accept a provisional certificate. But what I meant when I said that is sometimes the applicants, they send us a provisional certificate from 2015, and then obviously in that case, we can't accept them. But if you just finished your uh, the program that you were doing, yes. Obviously, you need to meet all the other entry criteria, but yes. OK, great. Um, the other question from Sir Faraz Ali, last date of tuition fees for international students. Um, I, th I wouldn't say that we have exactly a last date, but we ask all the applicants to pay the fees as soon as possible so we can start the visa process. So because, you know, the sooner you get uh, your visa, then you you know, we have everything ready for you to to fly to Malta and then you start the course. But so ideally, because we want to start uh, all the visa processes for October in June, I would say by the end of June. We have unmuted you, uh, Ali. You can speak uh, if that helps your query. The other question is by Ruth Edimoya. Uh, how much deposit can be paid? I think uh, Mariana has already replied. 50% is what we can pay upfront. And once your first semester is done, you can pay the rest. Uh, Avijit Sharma, I have several letter of recommendations, high IELTS score, high ratings of my projects. And can I urge for a scholarship? Can you repeat the question, Hamali, please? He mentioned that he has, uh, Abhijit mentioned that he has several letter of recommendations, high IELTS score, high ratings of his projects. Can he urge for a scholarship? I, at the moment, we're not doing scholarships. I mean, we have to keep in mind that the prices are uh, very low prices, and especially if you consider the Get Qualified scheme, where you will get practically 70% back of what you paid. Uh, you know, I mean, as I said, the masters can at the end cost you only 3,000 euros out of 7,000. So at the moment, scholarships are not are not available. I'm afraid. Uh, 
Um, then we have one question by Ali. Uh, there, there's one more Ali. Are there any chances of visa, visa rejection if we stay have a study gap? However, I have been working once um, I was done with my intermediate. According to, to visa, no, you cannot get rejected because of a study gap. However, it is always at the discretion of the central visa unit. You will you will have an interview and it, it's at their discretion whether you get your visa or not, but the study gap will not make any difference now. OK, um, the other one I am from Bangladesh. This is Sushan. Suhan Mia, I'm from Bangladesh. There is no student visa process from VFS. In that case, university will help any kind of things to get the visa easily. Yes, in the case of Bangladesh, it will be with the new system. Um, so it will. Uh, the, the visa process will start through through the university, through us. We will apply for you and then we'll guide you which documents you will need. And basically then it's it's done through us. There is bright is a bore. Uh, can a higher national diploma graduate with over 12 years of work experience apply for a master's degree? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, uh, the work experience does not replace the qualification. So it is one of the entry criteria that you have to have a bachelor's degree. Yeah, Sunday, Stella, please. Uh, please guard me and I'm a bit confused what she's trying to say. Would I still be needing an insurance policy from my country here after paying for guard me insurance? Um, no, because guard me is an international insurance provider. So if you decide to opt with insurance with GBS Malta, we will be using, of course, guard me and there's no need for you to have another insurance policy. It is very important for everyone to have an insurance policy for the simple reason that un until they start working in Malta, so that means until they start working and paying taxes and national insurance in Malta, health, health in case something happens is not free of charge. So having a health insurance policy is a must so that if something happens and you need to go, for example, to hospital, uh, your health, health will be covered by the insurance policy. Uh, it is very important and even it is a requirement for visa. Mary, I'm a no, I'm in North Cyprus right now, but I'm a Cameroonian and we don't have embassy in Cameroon, nor in North Cyprus. Do I need to go back to Cameroon before applying for a visa? I think I think Mary, this is this is a, a, a good question. I would suggest uh, you send us an email or uh, I think Ruth shared her email address. I think it makes sense if you drop an email to Ruth. Uh, we need to check. We also need to check uh, your current residence permit that you have, because uh, if you have a Cyprus residence permit, whether that can be used to come to Malta uh, or not. So please do drop an email to Ruth and she will check with Central Visa Unit for you. <coughs> Yes, um, we have Dosa Pati Ganesh. When should you add funds in the account for proof of sufficient means? I didn't understand the question, sorry. Let me unmute him. Um, Dosa Pati, I have unmuted you. Could you um, address your question? When we should add the sufficient funds in our accounts for proof of. Uh... Basically, you need to show the funds for to apply for the visa. So as soon as we yeah. start your visa process, the funds should should be available then. Yeah, from when should we start showing our sufficient proof of uh, funds? How much? In the accounts? How much and what the time? before the applying visa? The funds have to be there before you apply for the visa. So when you, you prepare your documents for the visa, it shows your the, the, the correct amount. 
um, how much it depends from which country you are. Um, that's why I will be sharing um, the document I showed you during the presentation. Ruth, I think from, uh, yeah. I think yeah, I think the question is because for some countries you need to have the money in your account for all three months. I think that's the question. Is that the case yeah. for Malta? I have no idea. I have never heard that it should be there for for so long. I don't know. Okay. We we will check Thank that, and then obviously I will check for e sure. Yeah, if you can email admissions, um, and then we will get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ali has a question uh, again. What is a refund policy if visa gets rejected? So the visa policy for this intake, practically, if visa gets rejected, we refund in, in full. As from October, there is a 200 euros admin fee. Of course, we will always require a scanned copy of the original visa refusal letter. So we cannot just uh, assume a visa refusal by getting an email from any student telling us that his visa got, got rejected. Once we get the uh, scanned copy of the original visa refusal letter, then of course the, the, the refund process will, will commence from our side. And we will of course keep 200 euros visas administration charges, but then the remaining amount will be refunded. We have unmuted Ali in case he wants to add anything. I'm moving on to Meer Mariam Akhtar. Hi, Chima here. My nationality is Bangladeshi and I'm now living in Japan and applying from Japan. What kind of visa will you give to me? I think it's better in this case, it's better if you send me an email as well so I can double check on this. However, it will be a 90 day visa for Bangladesh for sure. This is very good about about the, the, the Japan just to add because any student that comes from Japan, they do not require a visa. They come here on a 90 day free visa. Same like, for example, Colombians or students coming from Brazil. However, we need to check what current residence permit you have uh, and if it's sufficient for you to come here in, in to Malta without any visa. So th this is why uh, cases like this, please email my colleague Ruth and we will check with Central Visa Unit for you. I hope so that there is helps. a yeah. yeah, I hope that helps. Yes. Uh, Oliver, my name is Oliver. I'm a student in Israel, but I'm from Rwanda. Is it possible to apply for a visa here in Israel or I have to go back to my home country? This is same as the, as the one before. It's better if you send me an email, Oliver, please, and I will check for you. Uh, Rahul Kumar, hello, I have a bachelor's degree with low percentage. Can I apply for master's and how is it? How is required and can my spouse go with me? Well, uh, the first part of the question about the entry criteria. So you need to have a bachelor's degree and you need to meet the end, the, the minimum grade. So, for example, for most of the countries, you need to have at least a second class bachelor's degree. So, I mean, it, it is obviously something we, we can look into. So if you could send your degree to admissions to our email, we will check that. But normally you need to meet the minimum entry criteria. And yes. I think about about this about the spouse. So usually if you're applying for a visa, you can bring your, your spouse with you, right? You can bring your spouse, however, your spouse will only be here with a tourist visa, so it will be a 90 day visa. We can add something about the spouse visa because and this is a very interesting question and I know this question gets asked quite, quite a lot of time. It's true, as my colleague said, uh, it's a 90 day visa. However, if your spouse decides to enroll with an English language school, for example, to, to follow an English language course, or she's offered a job opportunity in Malta, then of course uh, that person can stay in Malta because 
if she applies with an English language school, then the school will apply for a, for a visa for her. So that will be a longer visa for her to stay. If on the other hand, she manages to find a job in Malta, uh, then the employer will apply for what we call the work permit. And that is practically a one year stay in Malta and can be extended uh, every year. So there are two opportunities where spouses can stay in Malta for a longer period of 90 days, to be honest. Um, Tony uh, is asking, I'm in Nigeria, but I'm a Nigerian, but living in Kazakhstan, there is no embassy here. How will the visa process occur for someone like me? I think for all these questions which are living in different countries, I think they are better to send me an email and I will uh, check accordingly because every country is different so I can't give one answer and it fits everyone. Yes, so any uh, anyone relate any question related to visa, please add Ruth. Uh, she's put her email ID on the chat because every country has a very different rule and um, regulations. She has to specifically see your case. Um, Sunday Stella, uh, please. What is Malta minimum wage? How uh, and who a student? We can get, secure a good paying job to support our studies. This was addressed by Alan, but we can just quickly address it. Sure, I mean, the minimum wage in Malta uh, is 800 euros per month, but of course, nobody pays these salaries uh, because of the vast job opportunities that there are. In fact, a lot of companies are poaching people from different companies because there's a lot of needs, to be honest. I would say normally you are looking at something around 1,200, 1,500 euros per month. Uh, keep in mind it's a 20 hour uh, job, so it's a 20 hour per week, to, to be honest. You can, of course, work extra hours uh, during the weekends, for example. But just to say, you know, from what I said, we have students that are currently working in Malta. 90% of our students are working in Malta, and some of them even manage to send funds back to their families back home. Uh, so that is quite, quite a good thing. As I said, we have accommodation options. And it's a very good thing for visa, especially because the funds when you choose accommodation with the school are much less than if you opt to choose accommodation privately. However, I do know that after some some weeks or months, students would probably look for something else and share an accommodation with other students. And if you decide to share accommodation with other students by by finding a nice apartment close to school, you are normally looking at 800 euros per month. But if you share an apartment with three students, 800 euros that is divided by three. So the fees continue to go down and imagine you get 1,200, 1,500 euros per month as an extra income. I think you will be able to live quite comfortably in Malta. As I said, we will be guiding you. We will be showing you where you need to look and where you need to submit your CVs. We will also be bringing speakers on the campus uh, to help you. We will also be bringing recruiting agencies to give you tips how to write your CV in the Europass format because Malta forms part of the European Union. So there are a lot of things planned for our students. Uh, for me, the satisfaction comes when I see students uh, obtaining jobs, managerial positions, uh, middle management or senior management. I do not want students studying with GBS ending up doing low level job. There's nothing wrong with it. I did it myself. But our intention is, of course, to to make sure that students are building their career and eventually stay here in Malta. So this is this is our intention to be honest. Uh, Zainib Eric El Gordon, uh, I want to know about the job opportunities after completing the course that Alan has just responded. Will the college help us to find the jobs or we should find it on, on our own? So this is a, a good question. We will, of course, give you tips. We will, of course, bring speakers here to help you, uh, to guide you. Uh, but we will not, of course, uh, make, make, make sure that, you know, we, we cannot be uh, the the entity that will help you to find the job. We will of course guide you. We will we will make contacts with recruiting agencies. As I said last week, for example, on the English part side of things, I managed to find jobs for three for students that that gave me their CV. But it is because we happen to know people. Being Maltese and living in Malta, we have some contacts. But it cannot be taken as for granted that we will of course find jobs for for our students. We will help students. We will guide them. We will show them what they need to do, and we will also bring recruiting agencies to our campus in order for the students to be able to find good jobs.
Kadera Annagor. He's one of our applicant. Uh, please, how soon will I hear from the embassy? I'm done with my application. Again, another question which Ruth will be able to help you. But uh, anything related to admissions, guys, please send us an email because right now if we take it in, then it, there's a lot of um, similar queries. I will still um, ask her to respond for you in case because you're already in enrolled. So. Hi, Chaydira. Uh, I checked with CVU this morning, in fact, regarding your query. If you want, I can reply to you by email. All the minimum wage, most of them are similar. I want to know about the job opportunities. Hi, I'm Mustafa. You talked about new visa policies. I'm wondering about Iranian nationals. Same um, response. Uh, you'll have to send an email to Ruth for any visa related questions. The visa is rejected. How much time is needed to refund policy? Because Bangladesh, there is more hindrance in getting student visa. What should we do? This is from Suhan, uh, Bangladesh. If the visa gets rejected, um, how much time is needed to refund the policy? So from from our side, within one week, maximum two weeks, we will process the, the refund. However, there, we are talking about two separate banks, the local bank in Malta and the local bank in your own country, and that can take time. That can take two to three weeks. Uh, so we are normally looking at five to six weeks period uh, until you actually get the refund. But I can assure you that from our side, if we have no objections and the refund is practically, uh, you know, a legit, a legit, a legit case. In this case, for example, visa refusal again on presentation of the official uh, visa refusal letter. Then from our side, uh, the paperwork and the refund process shouldn't take more than two weeks. However, as I said before, Bangladesh is now in the new process, so it is much, much simpler and so much faster than it was before. Najim Said, uh, I will be getting a bachelor degree next June. So can I apply now for a master's? It's a very interesting question. I think I've, I've replied that one already. So, and there's all the people that just said they are waiting for certificates because they haven't finished the course yet. So the answer is the same for everyone. So as long as you meet the other entry requirements, yes, you can receive a conditional offer. And then once you have your final certificates, you just need to send them to us and we will issue you a unconditional offer. But just I just want to stress that you just you need to remember that we will issue you a conditional offer, but then if you don't meet the condition, you know, we won't be able to go ahead with the with the admissions process. Just want to make I just want to make that clear. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, Ali. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question regarding that. So we have to pay the full amount of the uh, college fees, tuition fees, or we can pay half of the amount. Uh, fifty percent is what uh, we said in the in the call. Fifty percent can be paid now, and then uh, once you're enrolled after the semester ends, you can pay the fifty later. I think we have one minute left for the questions. Uh, so any interest, any last questions, please feel free to ask. I think they are repeating their questions now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Rahul Kumar, we've already addressed this question. Um, how much fees I have to pay before visa, which is 50 percent. How much funds should I, uh, how much funds I have to show to the embassy that I think Mariana can help you. I think the funds for the embassy uh, will be shared later on with Ruth. Yes, um, Khalil uh, Ur Rehman, is, a, is it good to learn Maltese language in order to survive in Malta and get a job? Look, I mean, 
if you learn the Maltese language, I will be proud of, 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 of you because it's, a, it's, it's an interesting language. It's not a must because, as I said, English is, 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 is our main language. I mean, my colleagues in the office are all, are all, are all non-Maltese, so I speak English with them all the time. 20% uh, of our population consists of non-Maltese people. So we have, we have quite a lot of numbers, you know, of students and workers that come here from international uh, countries. So no. If you don't know the Maltese language, you will still be able to survive because everybody speaks English. Hey, Mali, can I just answer the two questions about menu of yes, instruction, please? please. I'm actually yes. trying to zoom yeah. up. It's too much. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. So that is just for Nigerian and Ghanaian applicants right now. If you have a medium of instruction proving that your you were taught in English that is one of the documents that we can accept to replace the English test however is not the only one so you will need your YX certificate proving that you got grade C or above in English and then you you will need the medium of instruction and you will also need a letter from your employer saying that English is your is the language that you use every day so, but if you want more information, like details, email, admissions, and then I will give you more details, but it's just one of the documents. It's not just the only one we need. Um, someone in chat wants to know more about the 70% scheme. I think that's a common confusion. So let's address that as well, please. Really. So the 70% the scheme is, is an initiative by the government. The main reason behind it is because the government wants to attract uh, international students to come and study here uh, because, of course, it makes sense for any country to have qualified people here uh, with, a, with a bachelor's, with a master's or with an MBA, and eventually they stay in Malta and work in Malta. So the scheme applies to anyone, even to Maltese people, of course, that lives and works in Malta. It's a minimum of two years. So uh, if after graduating you find a job, but after two months you decide to leave and go back home, of course, they get qualified scheme and in that case does, that doesn't apply. But uh, anyone can get up to 70% tax credit. Keep in mind that when you're working in Malta, you pay taxes on a monthly basis uh, together with the national insurance. So at the end of the year, you will get a tax credit of what you already paid, uh, in this case, with GBS, with GBS Malta. Uh, happy to say that all our programs are approved by the Get Qualified Scheme. And I think it is a good initiative uh, for anyone that would like to come to Malta to, to, to enroll within a higher ed education institute. Uh, I am still waiting for my unconditional offer so I can pay. It's if if you non you I'm sorry, I can't uh, not pronounce your name. Let me unmute you. I don't think we can hear this student. He's not there in the chat anymore. Okay. So <laughs> this one last, I'm assuming it's the last one. I was told that GBS is not globally recognized. Can you shed more light on it? Fola. It is globally recognized. As I said, uh, in Malta, you need to pass through a rigorous process until you, you get approved by the local entity in Malta, which is Malta Further Higher Education Authority. But happy to say that, of course, we are in partnership with BSU, which is a, a, a UK university, and it is the, the, the qualification is recognized internationally. It is also recognized in Malta through the NQF levels. So the, the level six, for example, bachelor's is recognized in Malta. Uh, so that means that anyone that gets uh, a degree here in Malta with GBS then of course it is easier for him to find a job because the qualification that he will get through GBS Malta is already recognized by the uh, Malta Further Higher Education Authority. I mean, uh, we have all the approvals for Baspa University, so there's no need to worry about that because we are officially in partner with, with Baspa University. Uh, Lucky, I unmuted you. You were trying to speak something. I think we are done. Uh, Lucky is not responding, so we can move on. Uh,
Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> I just got distracted by my. I'd like you to explain uh, the conditional and the unconditional offer for admission and uh, the visa processing uh, details. I didn't quite get some much info about that, so I'd like to throw more light on those areas. That's the reason why I raised up my hands. Thank you. Okay. Uh, lucky in this case, uh, also because we're reaching the end of this webinar, I would suggest you send an email uh, to either admissions or my colleague Root. Both email addresses are shared in the chat and they can give you more information over there because it is a, a, a long process. There's a lot of information to share, so it will take another probably 15 minutes to give you all the explanation. But I, already, please, I already have the admission. I already have the admission. I'm a okay, so good. Right, but so when I heard something about uh, conditional and unconditional, I was like, did I mean, am I missing something? So that's how to, mm -hmm. that's how to okay. get more information in that area. All right. But please feel free to, to send an email to admissions. My colleagues, um, yeah. and they will reply straight away to your to your queries. So please uh, drop them a line on admissions at vbs.edu.mt. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we've reached the end of this webinar. It was an interesting, as always, session. Thanks, Hemali, for organizing all this. Thanks to my colleagues, Mariana and Ruth. Thanks to all of you for your interesting questions. And, you know, we hope to see you maybe this October. Any questions you have regarding visa, you can email root. Any questions you have about admissions, my colleague Mariana will be there for you anytime. Thanks a lot and have a great week. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.